hope you can see me standing here. Can't even see my face. Why does everything have to be so dumb? My nose is just running. Like, where do you need to be set? Sometimes I just get so frustrated with these cameras. Like, seriously, what is going on? I'm chopping my face off the whole time. Oh, okay. Where'd you go, fatty? You little crybaby. Okay. All right, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, so as some of you might have seen with my posts and the little short that I put up, my shovel head left me stranded the other day. First time ever in six years of riding my shovel head has it ever left me stranded. And something has broken inside of my kicker box here. Um, what happened is I was going to leave for work and I just got out of my driveway, went to pull the clutch in and I pulled it. I heard something snap or break or whatever. And then all of a sudden my clutch lever was just all floppy. I thought maybe it was just a broken cable. So I got off the bike, took a look, but the cable was actually no longer in the arm, in the, uh, the clutch arm that comes out of the kicker box. So I checked the cable, cable's not broken. It's not even looking like it's gonna break anytime soon or anything like that. And the clutch arm is just all floppy on there. So it's something inside of the kicker box. So I'm taking my kicker cover off and I am gonna see what, what, it, what it ends up looking like in there. Um, Thankfully, I do have a spare one of these transmissions, so if I need to rob some parts out of that one, then that's what I will do because I don't want to wait for things to show up in the mail. So I'm just going to take this apart and see what's going on. Yeah. Let's undo them a little bit each, a little bit at a time each. Are these all loose now? I think so. If this one's loose enough that I don't need to set that up. Yeah, so what I think it is, I had a few people comment telling me that they think it's my throw out bearing. And, uh, you know, yeah, throw out bearing anyway. Some people thought it was my cable. It's not my cable. I checked that right away. Um, but, yeah, some of you were saying it could be my throw out bearing. My dad actually uh, was showing me this other transmission that we've got and he showed me the part he thinks it probably is which is the little fork it's like a little two-pronged fork that sits on this shaft and it uh and it um pushes against the throat bearing so he's seen those break i guess that's kind of common and um that's kind of what I'm thinking it could be. Anyway, I've do, I do have extra parts from that other transmission, from the other kicker box off that other transmission anyway. So we will see. Normally I just order my own stuff online. And if you're in Canada, it, um, you get free shipping on any orders over $49 at Fort Nine. So that's normally where I order my stuff off of is just on Fortnite there. And um, they're really good about returns and stuff like that. If what you get doesn't work for you and yeah, free shipping on any orders over $49. So much oh, freaking stuff spilling everywhere. Why isn't this coming off? 
Oh, there's still a bolt in there. Dang it. I'm trying to quickly do this before all the oil spills out. Oh, that one's like right there. Come on. Get off of there now. There we go. Leave that shaft in there. Oh. So this fell out right away. I discovered what was actually broken in here. It fell right out as soon as I took the cover off. But this is what my dad told me it probably was anyway. It's this fork in here. It's this little fork that actually um, pushes on the throw out bearing. So I'll show you guys that. And it's actually just split right in two. Yeah, so thankfully, I do have this spare kicker box and I'm going to just rob the fork out of here because, um, well, I can and I don't want to wait for one of these to come in. They are slightly different looking, as you can see, but they'll work the same and uh, yeah, it should be good. That's one thing I like about my old shovel head is that it's just like so simple to work on like I don't know a lot about old Harleys or shovel heads or whatever like everything that I've learned I've just learned since I've been riding my shovel head so like in the last five or six years and um it's just like because I don't want to pay someone else to do the work and I feel like it's always like iffy unless you know someone that you know is good. You don't know if you're getting good quality work or not. Um, but I'm, I feel like it's good to know how to fix your own stuff anyway. Even if you do decide you want to just go pay someone else to do it. I feel like knowing how to do it yourself is never a bad idea. I'm going to go find a brush. Tiny was out here with me, but I guess he got bored. I guess he got bored or something waiting around. Good old brake cleaner. Works for everything. And we should be good. I'm not gonna get too ridiculous with it. Okay, so same deal here. I got a little clip holding the shaft in at the bottom. And I'm just gonna show you guys what this looks like on the inside. Yours might not look exactly the same because my dad did just add a few pieces into mine. So, let's see if I can get you guys to be able to see this. You guys can see on there, I've got like a couple, I've got an O-ring here, um, and then I've got like a couple washers and another clip on the shaft there. Now, yours might not have all those parts, probably doesn't actually, because my dad, added those in there so that when this fork is on it, it's kind of just gonna stay centered, stay where it belongs, and it'll keep this centered on the throw out bearing so that you're getting an even load. And the reason how come my dad does that is because uneven load on it will just make it so that it wears out just so that much quicker. So that's what we've got going on here. So I just need to remember how all that stuff is situated in there and then I can uh, put it all back together the way that it came apart because like any bearing you want to have even like load on it right because well that's just how they work I don't know why I'm not a scientist or whatever like what are those guys called that engineer not an engineer either not any of those things. I'm just a girl working on her bike, figuring it out as she goes. Now I just have to put it all back together. Yay. And make sure when you are doing this, um, if you end up doing this, then just make sure when you put your fork back onto your shaft, because it's like a square bit that it actually sits on on the shaft there, that your, that your clutch arm here is oriented in the right position. You don't want it kicking out way back there because then you're not going to be able to turn it once the fork's on there. So you want it kind of somewhere where it would end up being, like pointing towards the inside, like 
that when you put your fork back on there. So I'm going to slide this in. <clears throat> I'm going to put my little bits back on. Okay. So that should be correct. I'm just going to show you guys this, how my dad has it set up, had, had it set up. So you, as you can see there with all of those little extra bits, oh, get off of there. With all of those little extra bits on the shaft, there's like no wiggle room at all. So this, uh, this fork has no up and down movement on it. It's got a little bit, right? So it's not binding, it's not tight in there. But um, it's not, it's not, the fork's not gonna be moving around a whole bunch. It's gonna stay in the same spot, put an even load on the throw out bearing, so. I know some people just like, they don't care, I guess, about spending money on stuff or they maybe they just have the money to spend on getting their work done in shops. I don't have that kind of money and I feel like even if I did, I probably would still want to do my own work because it just gives me like sense of accomplishment, I guess. And then it, it just like, I feel like I know my motorcycle then too. You know, I don't have to feel like intimidated if something breaks and all that, like, I guess if you have the money to spend on it and you don't want to get dirty, then why not, you know, take it to a shop, spend the money. If it saves you time to do things that you enjoy. But personally, I like being able to fix my own stuff. Personally. Time to put it all back together. Yippee. When I do Loctite, I always Loctite all my bolts first. And then, uh, then that way I'm ready to just throw them all in when the thing is in place or whatever. So I'm just gonna put a little drop on each bolt. Just on the end. Just a little bit. Doesn't need to be a lot because I don't want them being impossible to get off. Just a little bit like that on the end. And then I'll just stand them all up on the floor like that until they're all done. And then that way when it's time to put them in, then they're all ready to go. Yeah. Okay, go. Don't you mess me around now. Okay, now I just gotta get it in there. Okay, I need this. Just get one of them started. Make sure they've got them all. Feels like it. Okay, now I'll just try and do them all up to the tightness that they were before. It is going into aluminum, so I don't think I need to get crazy. And I've been known to get a little crazy when it comes to tightening things up. Good. Okay, well, I don't think that was too bad. Put my clutch cable in and then see if it feels proper. Okay, so here I am on the other side of my bike. Um, and I got my clutch cable done up. Well, I got it in the arm anyway, and I've got it adjusted to where I want it to be. So for anybody who might not know already, when you are adjusting your clutch cable, um, if you've got like the same setup as me or whatever, I've got just a cable clutch, the throat bearing to my transmission or whatever, my clutch lever pulls the cable, which pulls the clutch arm on top of the transmission, which then will turn that fork that I just replaced and that fork pushes against the throat bearing. So when you adjust your clutch cable, you want to make sure there's just a little bit of slack in that cable because 
you don't want your throw out bearing to be constantly like partially engaged. So if you have a little bit of slack in your line, then um, you don't have to worry about your throw out bearing being always constantly engaged and you don't have to worry about that wearing out so quickly. It's not good to always have that bearing engaged. So now that I've got that adjusted to where I want it to be, I'm actually going to loosen this off about half a turn so that it makes up for the amount that this is all gonna end up tightening up when I finally do that nut up tight. There we go. It should be good the way that it is. Yeah, that should be plenty tight enough now. Double check my slack. Seems about right. Seems right. Seems about where it was before. Okay, let's see how this is feeling. Seems about right. Feels good. Perfect. Now time to clean up this mess and throw some tranny fluid back in this thing. Well, that was actually not that hard of a job. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. Went pretty easy. Now I know how to do something that I didn't know how to do before. And if it happens again, Hopefully it's the same thing so that I know how to fix it. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but it probably will because that piece just does not look like, you know, it was engineered the best way. And I've got a pretty hard clutch to pull. Um, yeah, this is like a performance clutch and it's pretty hard pull. So it's probably putting a little more stress on that piece than what a stock clutch would. I don't actually really know because I haven't pulled a stock clutch on anything this old, um, on any Harleys this old anyway. So, um, yeah, but anyway, that job is done. It feels good. Yes, I'll be able to ride my bike tomorrow to work. I, I think it's going to be sunny. Actually, it might be raining tomorrow. It's been raining for a couple of days. We're just in the rainy season here, so it's really hit and miss if I get to go for a ride. Um, yeah, if my clutch wouldn't have broken, or well, if that fork, I should say, wouldn't have broken um, on the weekend, then I would have taken you all out for a nice sunny ride. But, well, I didn't do any riding and it kind of sucked because that was a really warm day. But we are supposed to be getting much warmer weather by next weekend. It's supposed to be like 25 degrees Celsius next Sunday. So I will be going for a good ride and I'm gonna take you guys with me because I haven't shown you guys any good riding roads in my new town yet. And I haven't even actually gone on any good riding roads on my new town yet because I've just really mostly been riding to work and back, which is better than driving to work and back. But yep, that's it. I'm just gonna clean up my oil mess, fill this back up with some transmission fluid and then yeah, take it off this lift and clean up more oil. <laughs> Other than that guys, I hope that this video was helpful and if not helpful, at least hopefully it was entertaining. And other than that guys, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Um, and like always, if you like what you see or if you just like me, or even if you don't like me, but you like my bike, my bike then like this video, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little notification bell if you care to know anytime a new video of mine comes out. And like always, my lovely YouTube people, I will catch you all on the flip side. Peace. And yes, don't worry, I'm not going to forget to put the plug in the bottom of my transmission before I start pouring oil in it. <laughs> And I'm going to do better than just putting the plug in. I'm going to put some of this pipe sealant on the threads because this plug likes to leak. So don't you worry about that. No more oil is getting on this floor. Not today. Not today. Okay. Bye.
Now I'll just show you guys. Actually, I'll show you after I get it all together because what the heck have I done? So, um, for anybody who might not know already, my nose is so runny out here because I'm freezing.